Hey guys. Well, today I'm going to do a project here that I, I'm hoping will help me out a little bit. The mosquitoes are fierce here right now, and uh, I want to try and make a product that, you know, some of you guys know that I've, I've written uh, just a few minor articles or whatever for Self-Reliance Illustrated. This was my first article I ever wrote was based was this project. Um, and it just, um, it comes from the birch tree, it's making birch oil. The birch tree for me is just, I mean, the more I use it, the more I experiment with it, I mean, it's basically my favorite tree. I can, I can tap it in the spring and boil the sap down and make, make a syrup or even just tap it and use it, the sap kind of like an energy drink. Um, when the shoots are first coming out, they're edible. Uh, the bark is just a phenomenal fire starter. You can make a container out of it. Uh, and then this project, you can extract the oils from the bark and you can make, you know, the oil can be a lamp, uh, like a lamp oil, it burns, you know, it burns okay, it puts off, you know, a black smoke, um, but still it burns. You can use it for an insect repellent. You can use it for a leather conditioner or a leather dye. There's just, and also, you know, if you follow Dave Canterbury, he's been, uh, uh, he says it's good for a, um, uh, it's for first aid, I can't remember right now, the term for it, not a, I think it's got antiseptic properties on it or something. Anyway, it, uh, it's good for a topical type, yeah, antiseptic properties, I think is what it, what it has. But anyway, it's good for a first aid salve or whatever. And I can't remember the exact name of the show. There's a documentary, and I want to say it's called The Happy People, and, or something like that. Anyway, it's about these guys. I think they're in Russia. It's um, the... Tyaga, or however you say it. But anyway, these dudes out there made it too, and they used it for an insect repellent. And they, you get up there, or like up in Alaska or something like that, I'm bitching about my bugs. Those guys' bugs are intense. I mean, you can just tell by watching the show, and I've done a little research on it and stuff. You get those forests where every, everything in life has to happen super quick because winters are so long that everything is just fierce. The growing, I mean, you grass will grow, you know, super fast, trees grow super fast in the summer. It's like everything needs to get it done, what needs to get done in a very short amount of time. So that's the same with like animals and bugs and stuff like that. They come out and they are fierce. They have to hurry up and they have to feed and propagate before the winter comes. That's my theory anyway, of why the bugs are so bad up here. Anyway, I'll stop rambling here, but, it, but what I want to do is make some birch oil, okay? I want to try to make it for, a, for an insect repellent. Let me uh, reset up the camera here, and I'll take you through the equipment that, this is how I researched and stuff, and this is how I made it for the article. First off, I, th I thought I'd just show you the issue here. It's issue 13, March of April last year, 2013. So, like I said, it's not, it's not like it's a masterpiece or anything, but I thought it was kind of cool. So this is my article, how to make birch oil. Just kind of go through the process of making it and stuff. I will, um, or I mean, I realize that a lot of people don't get this magazine, and so I'm gonna show you the method that I used for writing that article. All right, guys. So this is uh, how I researched on how to make it. Um, first of all, I've got just a little soup can type thing. This has actually had enchilada sauce in it. Um, this is gonna be the receptacle that I'm gonna catch the birch oil in. And then to do the burn in, I've got a gallon paint can. I just bought this one. You can buy empty ones at like Home Depot or whatever. Um, otherwise you could obviously use one that had paint in it if you cleaned it out real good. So I didn't realize, but I had stored this thing full of birch bark. So when I went out to go grab this here, I noticed it's already got a ton of birch bark in it. You poke a hole in the bottom, okay? You wanna make sure you poke this hole from the inside out so that it doesn't have like a little ridge to make so the birch oil won't pour out. So in other words, the ridge is on this side of it. When I do this is I'll um, take this to my birch log or something. I always use downed or dead stuff. Never take the birch bark off a live tree. Um, it'll kill it or at the very, very least it'll make it look like crap. But I'll take my paint can out into the woods or take a tape measure or something and I'll score the log, like if this was the log, I would score it on both sides and then I would peel the bark off. 
Now that's the same size as my paint can. And I'll roll all those layers of bark inside of here. Okay. Random pieces of bark. It doesn't, you don't have to be real clean about it. You just got to put a lot of bark in here. And I've done that to the outside and then on the inside and the middle, whatever I couldn't, whatever space was left, I just crammed bark in here. It takes a lot of bark. You're not going to get that much oil. You're probably going to get this, this much oil out of a whole paint container of birch bark. So sure you could do it on a smaller base, uh, smaller scale, you know, you're just not going to get as much birch bark. And I was going to use this as my receiving receptacle, uh, you know, in other words, having the, the oil go down inside of it. But it looks to me like it's got some sort of coating on the inside of it. And I want to try to get the oil as clean as possible. And obviously my paint can has this. I Maybe, you know, if you want to be totally chemical free or something like that, you might want to put this and do a burn, an initial burn in, and then scrape it all out real good and then do your burn. I guess I'm not that worried about it. So anyway, I've got this, I'm going to seal this lid and we're going to take it outside and uh, get set up. It's been raining and storming here like crazy, so hopefully the ground isn't too wet to make this happen. I, I think it'll be okay, but anyway, take this outside to the burn pit. All right, guys, I know the wind's bad and I'm sorry about that, but uh, you know we're right at the tail end of the storm here. So I buried my soup can down on the bottom of this hole. This hole is probably a foot and a half, maybe two feet wide, maybe a foot deep, something like that. All that water that's down in there, I'm hoping that won't increase the burn time, but I'm sure it probably will, but you know, I'm hoping it's not too super critical. Anyway, now I'm gonna take my other paint can, which I'm gonna grab right now, hold on. Okay, I've got my paint can now, and I know where the hole is in the bottom of it. I'm going to try to set that right over the top there. And hopefully get it so that it drains into the... I'm going to be kind of careful with this. I want to double check this a few times. But uh, i got to get the hole over the other can, obviously. And then I'm going to fill this in. I'm going to backfill it. So that the dirt is up here or so, maybe a couple inches up this paint can to kind of um, kind of stabilize it and stuff. Let me uh, let me double check that the holes over the top of that little receptacle can and uh, bury this up, and I'll I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so all I did is just like I said, double check, make sure the holes over the top of the receptacle can, and then I buried this uh, paint can a little bit, kind of to make a seal between the uh, soup can and the paint can. Also, when you do this. Um, Especially if you were to do this with something that does not. Alright, sorry about that. I'll try to edit that out. Um, if you were to do this with something that does not have a tight fitting lid, you're going to want to put a rock on top of the lid. And I'm going to do it anyway, just in case. You got to be careful though, because when this heats up, it makes the tin or it makes the metal really soft. So you can cave in and kind of ruin your, your work here. So now um, I'm just going to try to find some dry wood and I'm not going to get real bushcrafty about it. I'm going to use some paper and stuff and get a fire started. I'm going to let this burn probably for two hours and uh, I'll get back with you. Okay, I would have liked those coals to get, or I want those coals to get down around that uh, paint can. You can see it's kind of not doing that. But uh, this wood is super wet, and but hopefully now I got enough fuel on there, it'll take off, and then this fire will collapse around that paint can and really get a good burn. So, all right, get back with you. Okay, guys. Well, it's been almost two hours, just ten minutes, ten minutes shy of uh, two hours, and I was gonna let it cook for a little bit longer, but um, I don't think that wet ground really hurt anything. I think it just kind of cooled the uh, product when it went into the soup can. So I want to pull it off of here. Um, when I did this the first time, uh, well, I've only done it one other time, um, but when I did it and I cooked it for two hours, in the bottom of the jar there was a lot of, um, not a lot, but there was a couple chunks of tar. Um, when you boil this birch oil down even further, you can actually make tar out of it, which is a good, uh, 
waterproofer, you know. I think that when they made birch bark canoes and stuff like that, they may have uh, used some of that stuff to waterproof it. Otherwise, I've heard you can waterproof like boots and stuff. You know, it's just a just a general purpose waterproofer. But I don't want that tar in the bottom of it or as little as possible. I just, I want mostly the oil. So I think it's been cooking for long enough. So I'm just gonna kind of separate the stuff and let it cool down. Sorry guys for the sniffling, my allergies are really kicking up for some reason. Um, I want to be real careful with this that I don't knock that paint can over. I don't want to get a bunch of crap in my finished product. It's super windy here today, so hopefully you can hear me. Alright. I'm just going to clean the crap out, uh, clean the ashes and the coals away from the, the paint can and uh, let her cool down obviously before I touch it. Nice. We're good. All right. Got a bit there. Okay, let's take it back into the garage. Okay guys, so the container's filled to about here. So it seemed to have worked. And I didn't get any of that tar like I did the time before. So it's all pure oil. I might have uh, Pull it off the fire a little too soon then if there's not any tar in it, you know. But whatever, this works for me. It's a very intense um, wood smoke burnt type um, smell. So if you don't like that, you're not going to like this, I can tell you that. It's not like it's, for me it's not bad, I like it kind of. See there's something... Something down there. I don't know if that's water. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if that's water or what that is. Might be a little bit of water with all the moisture that we had and stuff. I'm going to open this can. And I did not need the rock on it. You can, I mean, it's totally sealed. Super, um, I don't want to say fragile, but I mean, it's really bending a lot. I mean, sticking something like this in the fire is not exactly good for the integrity of the metal, but it's just a paint can. Whew, boy, does that smell. There is... Maybe a little bit more viable material in there. I might have been able to leave that on there. Let's check this out here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I could have left that longer. There's a little bit of gummy crap in here. Okay. This is all, this oil all could have been leached out of there. So I didn't leave it on the burn for long enough. 
But that's all right. I got some out of it. Yeah. So whatever. When I first did this, I looked at this and I thought, wow, that would be great char. But I'll try it with a ferro rod here real quick. See if I can, ooh, got it all over my screwdriver. Let's see if my screwdriver will work. Nope. Um, but it doesn't work. Okay, goes out right away. Whatever. It's all, uh, it's not char. Oops. So, anyway, I could have left it on there a little bit longer. I've got some gummy crap in here, but whatever. Okay, that's it, guys. That's birch oil. A lot of different uses for this. Um, and Bobby, if you're watching this, maybe try some of this, man. All right, take care, guys.